Hello and welcome to today's webinar on MVME and MVME over Fabrics Virtual Plug Fest number 16. This event will take place the weeks of November 1st and November 8th, 2021. Uh, we will start off with uh, introductions. My name is Carrie Munson. I am the operations manager for the data center technologies at the UNH IOL. I am going to be joined today by Tim Sheehan, a senior manager of data center technologies. So a little bit about the UNH IOL and why we are running MVME testing. The UNH IOL has been uh, working with the MVME Express organization since 2012 uh, by managing the integrators list. Uh, so that will be the primary purpose of participating in the MVME and MVME over fabrics testing which will be occurring in a few weeks. So again, the MVME Plug Fest will be virtual next month. Uh, the testing will follow version 16.0 of the MVME conformance and interoperability test plans. This time we will not be admitting visitors to the lab. The IOL staff will be performing all the testing uh, completely by ourselves. And again, the primary purpose of this test event is to qualify products for the MVME integrators list, uh, which we will talk a little bit more later on. Uh, so here it is, integrators list. As of October 1st, the MVME integrators list has 295 products. And this has been over the course of the last eight years. Uh, every time a new version of the MVME test plan comes out, there is a new version of the integrators list. The MVME over fabrics integrators list um, does have 85 products on it as of October 1st. And this was established about uh, four years ago. So what can go on the MVME integrators list? Uh, the MVME integrators list does accept drives, host platforms, and switches, while the MVME for fabrics integrators list accepts Rocky, TCP, fiber channel, iWarp, initiators, targets, and switches. And I'm going to stop real quick and let everybody know if you have any questions throughout this presentation, please submit it into the Q&A box and we will be addressing questions at the end. So now let's talk about MVME integrators list requirements. Requirements for the PCIe SSDs um, will be three rounds of testing. Uh, there will be two rounds of conformance testing. The first will be with our PC edition IOL Interact software, and the second round of conformance testing will be with the LaCroix edition Interact software. The third round of testing is our MVME interoperability testing, which involves uh, three shutdowns and three restarts, along with uh, running IO tests. And that has to be run with six different MVME host platforms. And as long as five of those six host platforms do pass, um, that part of the interoperability test does pass. Um, along with the interoperability testing, the product must pass with two boot systems. And if your device is a U.2 or E1S or E1L form factor that will also need to perform hot plug testing. And then if your product does support MVME MI, uh, there will be a MI conformance test that we will run. And we do run that with the Peladyne LaCroix edition test tool. Uh, if you are interested in 
in getting this test to all, uh, please contact Teledyne LaCroix directly and they will be sure to provide you with the MI test scripts. And then requirements, if you have a host platform or a switch, that will need to be tested with at least five NVMe SSDs and um, it would only be interoperability testing. For NVMe over fabrics integrator list requirements, uh, for hosts, uh, only interoperability testing will occur and that has to pass with uh, two NVMe uh, targets. And if your product is a target, that will have to go th through three rounds of testing, um, two rounds of conformance testing, one being with the base conformance test and the other with the MVME over fabrics conformance test. Um, in addition to the conformance testing, there is interoperability testing where um, you would need to have tested with two MVME over fabrics host partners. Um, those interop partners um, can be the same hardware uh, with different operating systems or drivers. Um, so if you are able to test before the event, um, just be sure that your product has tested with at least um, this combination of products uh, to ensure that when you do send your product, uh, there won't be any surprises. So integrators list information. If your product does qualify for the integrators list, we will need the following information uh, for the PCIe integrators list. Um, uh, the information is listed out right here. Uh, if you do have that before the event, um, it will be very helpful to us because we can include that information on the test report. We do understand uh, sometimes uh, there are delays due to marketing or internal versus external namings, um, but uh, just contact us, let us know the situation uh, so that we can reference the device properly. And with that, I am going to turn the presentation over to Tim Sheehan. Great, thanks Gary. Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Tim Sheehan. I'm a manager here at the University of New Hampshire's Interoperability Laboratory, or UNHIOL for short, uh, in the data center industry, which includes the groups that perform testing for NVMe and NVMe OF. So what I'd like to talk about today is test plan 16 and the updates that have happened in this particular version of the test plans, and there are multiple as well as talk about some of the uh, IOL Interact PC Edition tools and some of the updates that we're going to be having there. So let's get started. So as most of you probably already know, but let's go over it again, just so for, for new people coming to the webinar today, the whole idea of the test plan development that happens um, that we're going to be testing out at the PlugFest 16 event in just a couple of weeks is that we take all the updates that come out of nvme.org um, that have been actually ratified, and we put them into a test plan. And it's both interop as well as conformance test plans. And then those test plans are actually voted on or agreed to by the NVMe technical work group, as well as the board of directors themselves. Now, all of these tests that get added in the first time are FYI, which means that they're informational only, and they're not mandatory in order to get on the integrators list that Kerry was just talking about a moment ago. This gives us a chance to see first off if the industry is ready for this test. Um, also, if the test scripts are, are ready for this test for testing of this kind of feature. Um, and it also gives the NVMe.org an idea of where the industry is in general. Once we've had enough of a sample that have passed this test, which means that you know products are actually um, compliant to the tests and the tests are working well, then they'll probably be moved to mandatory and agree that's voted on and agreed upon by the technical and the NVB board of directors, as well as the ICC committee. And from that point on, that test would be mandatory and required to be passed in order to get on the integrators list. But all FYI tests to begin with are not mandatory to get on the 
integrators list themselves. So if we take a look at what's happening today, here are the, here's the base changes that are going into the base specification to the NVMe conformance test plan. This is for PCI as well as OF testing, over fabrics testing. And right now we have 33 tests that did go from FYI to mandatory in that PC, for PCI testing, as well as 18 over fabrics tests that went to mandatory. Um, you should take a look at this test plan. It's available on the IOL website under the NVMe test group and under test plans. And you'd be able to see all those tests that have gone from FYI to mandatory. And the easiest way to find that is to go into the modification history at the top and you can see what has changed. Now, we have had a number of new tests added to, 29 to be exact. And these are both PCI and over fabrics tests. And they were taken from the following documents that were ratified by the NVMe.org. Um, an example of, or kind of talking about each one of the areas that have been added uh, from the ECN sections, there, were, there have been tests that have been added in order to deal with sanitize, some new sanitize features, uh, control level features across resets, persistent memory region management, as well as uh, being able to determine the effects of flush on a sanitized command and things like that. And you can see from these TPs, you could go into the, if you're a member of nvme.org, you go into the nvme.org, nvmeexpress.org website and see what those, the details of each one of these particular uh, documents are and how they reflect the tests that happen in our particular 16 version of the test plan. Now that's the base conformance test. Then we also have the NVMe over fabrics tests. These are ones that are specific to fabrics only. And at this point, there was only one test that went from FYI to mandatory. And that was the 3.2.2. test, which is dealing with uh, traffic based keep alive. So that's the only test that went from FYI to mandatory, but we did have five new tests that were put in to deal with the three areas that you can see listed there, scatter, gather, and then the PDU header digest as well as data digest. These are the only uh, changes that were made to the OF test plan, so not a lot there. But if we were to look at the MI test plan, and I believe this is the 1.1 version, you can see that there are 18 new MI tests that are available today. Now, the MI testing that happens is using the Teledyne product, uh, the Teledyne LaCroix product, as, as Kerry mentioned. And you can see the four different areas that were ratified in four different documents that were ratified by nvmeexpress.org. And each one of these areas will add a number of the tests that will equal up to 18. Some of them are the get set features for extended namespace, uh, verification of, of vital product data, VPD. It also does things like verify reset of any management endpoint, you know, doesn't affect any other endpoint. And then another area would be SM bus reset enhancements tests. So those are the areas that are changing inside the, the NVMe MI test plan. If we move on to our, our next test plan, this is a new one that came out at our last PlugFest, uh, which was PlugFest 16, which happened in June of this year. And we ran our first tests from that. And from, there, from the results of those tests, we were able to actually move 34 of those ZNS tests or zones namespace tests uh, from FYI to mandatory. Now, since then, we've, we've actually developed a large number, as you can see, 123 new tests have been added in in this version 16 of the ZNS test plan. And it's dealing with all of the different NVM type of tests that were already you know, used to test out NVM features, but now they've been brought across to deal with ZNS tests, similar CNS tests um, in the actual new test plan to test out your ZNS device. So again, you can see what they are listed out in front of you, sanitize, flush, verify, uh, zone active resources, uh, command write zeros and write zero, command write and then write zeros, um, reservations, uh, registrations, and how to acquire and release those. So definitely a lot of new tests being added into the ZNS area. Um, and I look forward to test your products with that. Now, in terms of, that was all the conformance changes that happened and to the test plans that we have doing conformance. 
But now we're going to just take a, a little bit of a change and talk about the interoperability test plans. There weren't a lot of test uh, changes for these two test plans that we have right now. We have the, the PCI interoperability test plan. And really, there's only one new uh, test, 1.11, which checks out the uniqueness um, of, of the IDs of, of any kind of NVMe storage device that we're going to be testing. And then one other note for that one is that we do have, uh, we'll be performing ZNS interoperability testing. Um, it's a case where right now in the test plan, it just mentioned this in the 1.1 uh, first test of the ID of an NVMe device, uh, but we're also going to be try doing uh, IO testing also on, on ZNS, even though it's not actually stipulated in the test plan, as well as I would think that at this point, we're probably not going to be able to do uh, boot tests, as Carrie had mentioned earlier about interoperability for PCI ZNS devices. So those are the really the only changes that are happening in the PCI land. And then really there's no changes in the NVMe over fabrics interoperability. So that made that easy. Um, so you can don't really have to uh, interrogate that test plan too deeply as unless you need to actually refresh yourself on what the test cases are doing because there are no changes. So that kind of went over the conformance and interoperability. But again, I just wanted to list out that you know the zone namespace is the new test plan that we can find and you can find it on our website. Right now as of as of our 16.0 version, um, there are 256 tests and you can see the different areas there and what the different uh, features that we're supporting as well as there are 34 of those tests will be mandatory in order to uh, get onto the integrators list for, for ZNS. Now doing interrupt, for PCI, these are the systems, and I know this is kind of an eye chart, uh, but this, these here are the systems. They really haven't changed since the June PlugFest of this year. Uh, version 16 was the PlugFest 16 in June. Um, so they're pretty much the same. And again, when you get the uh, slide deck sent to you, you'd be able to see this much clearer. But one thing that is new that I, I wanted to share with everybody is that here are the three systems that we're working with right now to do ZNS interoperability. And this list will grow, but since this is the first time we'll be doing interoperability for ZNS products, um, we wanted to make sure you know the, the products and the and the systems that we use to do that interrupt testing were appropriate. And this is the current list that we have today. And again, you'll be able to get a copy of this when you get a copy of the actual webinar. So that's all I had to say about the test plans and the updates themselves. There will definitely, as Kerry said, be a virtual plug fest. Um, no attendees. I'm hoping that the June of 2022 plug fest, which would be version plug fest 17, we would hopefully be able to have people uh, at that event. And hopefully we can reestablish our relationships when you come to those events. Um, but we'll let you know as we get closer, because obviously things can change pretty, pretty rapidly. So Let's talk a little bit about the IOL Interact PC Edition tool. So as you probably all know, right now we follow the test plan releases that come out of the ICC committee of nvmeexpress.org. There are two major releases every year. They coincide with our plug fest also, because these are usually new features that come out of any kind of new development that's happening in the NVM industry. Uh, and also any technical proposals that come out of the nvmeexpress.org. So we put together these two tests, new test plans. They, they coincide with the November and the June plug fest that we have. They're labeled the same way. And our IOL Interact tool is also labeled the same. So for this particular plug fest 16 that we're having right in about two weeks in November, you have the plug fest 16 version 16 we're also going to be working off of the test plan version 16 as well as the IOL interact tool version 16 would be used in order to run the tests at that event so it's pretty easy to follow that way just to let you know we do use agile processes to do the development here we're using jira bitbucket we hold uh Definitely scrum meetings as well as uh, bug scrubs and, and peer review of any code that goes in. This is to try to catch as many issues as we can before we release. We also have a release process that we go through in order to, re, uh, when we release any new, any new uh, release of, of the Interact software to make sure again that we catch as many issues as we can before 
you, the customer, actually uses it and, and hopefully don't find any issues at all. Um, currently, we're shipping on 1804 Ubuntu with a 5.5.10 kernel, uh, version 3 of Python and 1.4 of the NVMe CLI. And at this point, uh, we're shipping with the 1.14 version of NVMe CLI. Today's product for, for this particular PlugFest 16 is going to be dealing with the NVMe specifications, the 1.4 versions. The next PlugFest, which will be happening in the spring, will be dealing with the NVMe 2.0 um, version specific of the specifications, and we'll talk about those here in a minute. So we do have minor releases that we ship between our majors releases, and this is a case where those are really kind of bug fix releases, no new functionality, although we could add in tests that didn't quite make the um, the development schedule for the major release. But for the most part, the minor releases are dealing with just bug fixes. All right. And since ZNS is so new, I just wanted to let you know that it, it pretty much follows the same process that we go through for any NVMe or any NVM test that we have here for any plug fest. So we're going to update the test plan. Again, it's version 16, and it's going to run with the version 16 of Interact. The test right now for, for ZNS, um, at least the first tests that are new tests that are added into ZNS are all FYI, although today, because there were other tests added back six months ago, and they did pass a number of ZNS products that were from industry, um, 34 of those tests will be mandatory. And then as we go along, we'll take the results out of this plug fest, as well as the testing that we do during the six months between plug fest and update that particular mandatory list as appropriate. And again, we use the SPDA driver right now with Zona and with Zona Pend in order to perform the testing. So to give you a little bit about where we're going with the Interact PC Edition product, this these are kind of a couple of uh, things that should be happening after the PlugFest 16. Uh, we're going to be upgrading the product to run on Ubuntu kernel 2004. And at this point, we haven't determined an appropriate kernel, but we'll go with an appropriate kernel that gives us the functionality we need uh, in order to perform the testing at the level that you have all come to it to demand. We'll also be updating any of the NVMe CLI that needed. Right now, like I said earlier, we're 1.14, but we will also, this is a chance for us to make sure that we're up to date as well as, as it works correctly with uh, products that we have tested in the past. And then we will be releasing a new way of licensing our product. Uh, this will be a cloud-based RLM licensed product. This will probably be sometime in the late spring, summer, probably would be after the next PlugFest, PlugFest 17, just so we don't interrupt that at all uh, with any licensing changes. But at this point, um, that's something that'll, you know, is a pretty major one that will, will affect people because licensing obviously is what allows the product to run. So that'll be coming just to give you an idea of that will be coming. And then the last one is that we currently distribute all of our software using Box. And there has been some, some uh, discussions about replacing Box at the UNH level, and we use the UNH Box. So when that happens, we make sure we give you all enough notification and, and get you all logged into that so that you'd be able to get the software without any interruptions. But one of the big things that will be happening after this PlugFest release is nvmeexpress.org has done a refactoring. NVMe 2.0 is all about refactoring the test plans and, and product specifications for NVM products. Because they've refactored all of the actual specifications for NVM, NVM products, that means the test plans themselves will be refactored, which means they will need to follow the way the specs have outlined those changes. As you can see from the top right box there, these are all the test plans that will be changing also. And there are a few that won't change, but there will be a few more that will definitely be broken out into different tests. And really, since our IOL Interact GUI kind of follows the same test plan layout and numbering schemes as from the uh, 
1.4 and previous versions of the NVMe specifications, that means in 2.0, our Interact GUI will also need to follow the new layout and the new schemes of the refactoring test plans too. This will probably be coming out again in the spring before the PlugFest 17. And we'll probably be throwing a couple of betas out there just to make sure that it works. We will also renumber and put the old numbering. There'll be new numbering based off of the tests that are moved between uh, different and are made up in different test uh, plans that are made. But also we'll have the old test plan numbering in order to allow you to actually go back and understand the mapping between the new numbering to the old numbering. That is 1.4. Okay. ZNS. Oh, this is refactoring in the test plans that haven't changed. So if you look at this slide, you can see I had mentioned earlier that some test plans aren't really going to change. They didn't really get affected by the, the refactoring. ZNS, MI, and then, of course, the interrupt, the two interrupt test plans. These are not going to change, so you, you really don't have to worry about those. But what is going to change is the NVM base, what we call the base uh, conformance test plan of today, as well as the NVM EOF conformance test, test plan. And how these are going to work is that when they do the refactoring to 2.0, that means the NVM conformance, which, which originally had PCIe as well as over fabrics tests, will be broken up. We will take the admin commands, the administrative commands of NVM, and they'll be moved into the actual uh, base specification themselves. But then we'll also take the NVM IO command set tests that are in this base conformance test of like say 1.4 right now, and that will be moved into its own test plan. And of course, any tests that are dealing with fabrics will get moved into the fabrics test plan, as well as PCI is now considered a transport also, along with any of the RDMA or TCP um, transport protocols that we have that's supported for NVMe also. And that will then, and there's only one really, uh, I believe, PCI test that we have, and that's, that's number 10 in our current 1.4 test plan. And that will be moved over also into its own test plan. And then you can see by the, the lower box that the NVMe OF will be broken up into an NVMe over RDMA and an NVMe TCP test plan. So that might be a little confusing, um, but as we go along, this will be changed. You can always attend the ICC meetings that happen every other Tuesday. And, 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 and see and, and participate in, in this changes that are going to be happening, but, but realize that ultimately we're gonna follow the specification changes that have happened. And most of the tests that we've had historically since we have always built upon previous versions tests that really the tests aren't going to change that have been there. Um, they're just going to be renumbered at this point and be in a different test plan. And again, we'll have the mapping to the old numbers alongside of them so that you could follow and, and make sure that, you know, the, the, the new numbered tests work the same way as the old numbered test previous to 2.0 and the refactoring. So this, is, this, this one's going to be a pretty big change. This is going to be, um, because not only are we changing the test plans, but we're also going to be changing the way we depict them on the GUI themselves. It'll be different numbering, as I've said. But also, we would be grouping them similar to how the, the test plans are going to be grouped in terms of you would have an admin command group, as well as you would then have the IO command sets, such as NVM and ZNS, depicted. And then you would also have any other IO command sets, such as key value or something like that, that might be coming in the future, also depicted in the actual GUI, which is a different layout than what we have today. Today, we just have the base conformance specification, which lists out all the PCI, all the over fabrics tests that happen, as well as we then have another section that deals with the over fabrics and, uh, test cases that happen in that particular test plan. So those are definitely going to be morphed and changed around, and but just realize that they're all the same tests, just numbered differently. But also realize that when the PlugFest 15 and Test Plan 15s come out, obviously there could be new tests that will be added. And they would be added since we're going to be 2.0 and beyond. 
they would be added to the correct test plan at that point or the new refactored test plan at that point uh, in order to make sure that they, they follow the same. So new admin commands would go into the, the base spec, new NVM commands would go into the NVME command set and CNS would go into the CNS command set test plans. So that's the plan going forward. Um, stay tuned, I'm sure we'll be communicating some more to, to make sure you all fully understand it, but I'm sure most of you have already been aware of it since you follow the NVMe Express and all of the refactoring that's been going on there. All right. And then moving right along, you know, how do you get a version of this? Um, obviously, you need to be a member of the NVM or NVMe OF uh, test groups. And as part of your membership, you would get a copy. Uh, and a membership typically lasts for one year. And you would get a copy of the particular software, whether it's NVM or E or NVM over PCI or NVMe over fabrics, whichever fabric it be, RDMA or TCP, you would get a version of that software for that year that you're a member. Um, you would fill out a licensing agreement and then we would download it, as I said earlier, from, from Box. And then you would contact someone such as Kerry to get the license. And then the instructions are there in order to, to install it. Um, which we don't have too many issues that we hear from the customer base. So I think this, the installation is, is relatively simple and straightforward. Uh, one note I see in step five is that we do have a demo version. If anybody is new and, and has never used the product before or isn't a member and would like to see what it offers, then you're able to get a demo version that we give out for a 30 day period that will have a subset of tests available for you to run on your product in order for you to see what and how the product runs so you can make your purchasing decision. And then finally, you know, if there are any issues that are seen with the product or, or at all with running, if you're not sure if it's your product having the issue or our product having the issue uh, that's testing it or the scripts or something like that, you would definitely, you know, use the actual Iowa web portal in order to get in and actually let us know through the portal itself what the issue was. We would get a mail. Now we do track it internally via JIRA and we use obviously our source control is Git and Bitbucket. Um, and we use these tools along with our agile processes to make sure that we address and adhere and fix all of these issues that we have. When the new releases come out, we have release notes that come out, which address what, what fixes have been changed and, and made to the product, as well as any that might be still uh, not fixed, but you know, still an issue. That way, if you witness an issue on the product, you can always look in the release notes to determine, is it, was it fixed for, you know, in this particular release? Um, and I think I already mentioned a couple of times that, you know, you would be able to, you know, pick up those releases during the two major releases, as well as the three or four minor releases that happen during the six months between the major releases. And then the last box that we have down on the lower right just gives you that my IOL login, which allows you to add in any information for any issues you might see. So I hope that makes it clear how you could, you know, actually let us know and communicate any issues. And if not, you know, you can always contact myself or Kerry, and we'd be happy to, to, to talk you through it and discuss it. All right, great. Logistics. If you have a PCIe device that you are shipping for this test event, uh, we just ask that the product arrives one week before the event. Um, even if it arrives by the Friday before, um, that should give us enough time to set it up so that we can begin testing on that following Monday. Ship at least two samples of each product. For interoperability testing, we do need two samples uh, to run all the tests. Uh, if you have more samples to include, uh, that's even better. If we do have extra time, uh, sometimes we're able to test products in parallel, uh, which enables us to get the testing done a little quicker and get your results back to you sooner. If you have any special um, passwords or 
logins or instructions needed to get your device to to work. Um, make sure that we do have that information beforehand. Um, and same thing with if you have any special extenders or cabling uh, needed to run your device, uh, include that in your shipping. And then uh, the last step here, if you're able to include a return label and a packing slip, um, that will enable us to get your products back to you um, quicker. If you are shipping a fabric product for testing, um, just make sure that your solution is installed and working on a host system. Um, and that's all ready to go once it does arrive at the IOL. Uh, we will not be doing a large build at this virtual event. Um, we have done large builds in the past for the NVMe OF portion of the plug fest, but unfortunately we cannot do that this time. And then uh, please provide any essential cabling you need uh, so that we can get your device to function. And again, uh, a packing list and a return shipping label um, will enable us to get it back to you sooner. Uh, for OF, uh, sometimes problems will come about. Um, we can communicate via mails, uh, Zoom calls, and we'll try to accommodate different time zones. Uh, so we understand this is a little bit tricky being virtual. Um, it's nice when you're all here with us so that we can work out everything in real time, but we are going to do the best we can to uh, get your testing done as quickly as possible. Um, and then we will be able to provide a remote internet access to your product if you need to access it. Um, but we can work with you uh, if that's the case uh, when the time comes. All right, and again, uh, for fabrics especially, uh, please be sure that everything that we need for testing arrives a week before so that we can get it set up and ready to go for that Monday. Um, this also includes any hardware, firmware, accessories. Um, if when we're setting it up, uh, if we are missing something, we will contact you to see if we can get, um, get it set up uh, quickly for you. And then uh, we will not start testing until the Monday of the event. Uh, if you do send your product early, uh, we will set it aside so that uh, we can get everything ready to go all together. Uh, we will not make a schedule until after the registration closes. Uh, because this is a virtual event, it's not going to be a schedule um, like we do for the in-person events, but we do want to give our, um, our members an idea of when uh, to expect test results coming. Uh, typically, we'll run uh, conformance first, um, but to do testing in parallel, there will be a few companies that will be uh, having their products run interoperability first. So uh, we'll be sure to have a lot of open communication throughout those two weeks. And then uh, the test reports will, will be provided by November 30th. Um, so it will give us uh, those two weeks to hopefully wrap up testing. Um, if testing does go a little bit over, um, we'll have that um, short third week uh, to hopefully get everything resolved and um, write the reports by that last week and send them off to you. And once the reports are um, provided, then um, Carter, Snay, and I can work with you to get that information for the integrators list if your product does qualify. I do want to bring attention to this slide. Uh, we are going to be having some price changes and um, some new additions uh, for purchase. Uh, the ZNS tool that Tim was talking about earlier um, is going to be an add-on of the IOL Interact test tool. Um, if you are interested in uh, getting the ZNS test tool, uh,
just send me an email and I can work with you to get you a quote for that. Uh, with this first year, we will prorate the price of the ZNS test tool. And then on November 1st, uh, we will be increasing our membership fees. Um, but if we do get a purchase order in before November 1st, uh, we will honor the uh, current rate, uh, MVME being 23K, uh, Rocky membership being 28, and MVME over Fiber Channel was 23K as well. All right, so to sum up everything we just talked about, um, Tim briefly mentioned uh, the ICC calls. I do want to call out uh, that they do occur every Tuesday, 2 p.m. Eastern time, 11 a.m. Pacific. And uh, Ryan Holmquist from Intel does chair that committee. Um, so please feel free to join us for those calls. And I do wanna give a shout out to our partners. Um, they have been with us throughout all of our MVME plug fests. And although the last few plug fests have been virtual, they have still been able to support our testing. Um, so if you are looking for any additional test tools, uh, please feel free to reach out to our partners uh, for our assistance. Our registration can be found right on the IWELL website. Um, the link to the registration is the same for both uh, Fabrics and PCIe. When you do sign up, uh, please be sure you include all the um, tests that your device does support. Um, if your device supports MI, uh, ZNS, uh, just so that we can be sure to get that testing on the schedule. And uh, for fabrics too, um, please list out the transports that your product supports. Uh, if it's both TCP and Rocky, um, let us know that as well. Um, we will take uh, two products uh, at registration, two unique products. Um, if you do have a third or fourth product that you would like to register, we will put that on a waiting list. And if there is space available, um, I will reach out to you and let you know that we will add it to this schedule. And again, no attendees will be permitted uh, at this test event. Uh, so please be prepared, uh, download the latest test tools and run them. Uh, you can find the links to the um, Interact License Agreement right on our website. Uh, if your company has already filled out a license agreement, uh, you can contact me directly and I can work with you to get you your unique license and send you the link to our box account. All right, so summary of our logistics. Again, um, please be sure to test before you ship everything. Uh, just to make sure there are no delays or surprises. Uh, we will do uh, some troubleshooting, um, but if troubleshooting is taking a little bit longer, we can uh, schedule a test reservation for after the test event. Uh, we will be limiting the firmware updates uh, due to time limits during the event. Um, so this event will take about a week for PCIe SSDs and about two weeks for Fabrics devices. And again, please ship everything the IWELL will need to test your product. Um, include a list so that we can reference it. And uh, when you get everything back, everything that you send uh, is included. And then um, non-passing products, like I just said, um, at that test reservation, you could still qualify to be on the integrators list if during the test reservation you do pass all the requirements. Um, at this test event, we will only be testing for integrators lists. Uh, there will be no other um, time where we will do testing for TMM, excuse me, yep, test and measurement companies. Um, before in the past, we've given our 
members a chance to sit down with uh, Biavi and Sam Blaze and Teledyne LaCroix uh, just to run some additional FYI testing. Unfortunately, that won't happen this time. And then uh, we hope to have all qualifying products added to the integrators list around November 30th, once all the reports have been sent out. So here's our contact information. Um, if you need to reach me um, regarding your test reservation or any quotes or questions about membership, um, if you have any questions related to the test plan or test tools, uh, feel free to reach out to Tim Sheehan. And uh, does anybody have any last questions? Um, I've got one, Carrie. Um, they're asking about the length of a license uh, using the Interact product. And typically the, the length of your, your license being enabled for your Interact products will be for the length of your membership. So typically that's a year. So you would get a license for your IOL Interact PC edition. It would be, you'd put it into the correct directory on the product and then you know run it. It would be available to you for that full year. And then once your membership is done after that year, you could renew it and then we give you another license for however long for a year uh, of your next membership. And, but it would run out after the year. And just to let you know, there are different types of licenses right now. Today, we have a base license, which allows you to do the base conformance testing um, that deals with all the test cases that are, are PCI based as well as admin based and NVM based and also over fabrics based in the base specification. But there is a separate license that is for the NVMe OF products. So that would be for the RDMA, TCP, as well as the fiber chip. Um, one other questions I see is that, uh, no, we're not going to be doing any testing for OCP uh, NVMe efforts today. This event for the plug fest that we do are for the NVMe express.org and to get onto the integrators list for that organization in order to make sure that you can pass all of the tests that are mandatory to get onto the integrators list uh, at this event using the latest and greatest software, new test plans and features that are, are being implemented in nvme.express. Uh, the, I guess they were asking about the OCP data center SSD effort that's underway and, and no, that's not going to be tested out during this event. Um, that is something that we're working on here in the lab that will be another set of tests based off of uh, Microsoft and Facebook's test plan that's being developed out of OCP. But again, that is not um, a, you know, part of this particular effort, uh, but it is being worked on here at the lab. And that's the last question. Anybody else have any other questions? Okay. Well, great. I thank you everyone for joining us today. I hope we've answered all your questions about the upcoming plug fest that'll be happening for the first couple of weeks or a few weeks in November. Um, if you have any other questions concerning the plug fest itself or how things work with the software, test plans, um, or working with NVMe Express, please, please contact myself or Kerry or Carter Snay and and you know, we can definitely assist you, or at least we could point you to the right people to talk to. Uh, it was a pleasure talking with you today and uh, I wish you good testing. <laughs>